Good morning, church. What a wonderful Sabbath day it is, especially this weekend as we remember the sacrifice Jesus made. So we think about that sacrifice that was made for each of us. So we celebrate his resurrection this weekend. And as we look forward to his second coming, which I know is soon to come. This morning, before we bow in prayer, I would just ask each of you to hold up some of our members uh, during your own devotions and during your own prayers. Uh, Candy Woody has had surgery. Judy Wetmore has had shoulder surgery. Alyssa Williams, who is my neighbor and friend, and who I think is all of our friends, had some tremendous seizures this week. Ended up down in Children's Hospital again. Uh, Denny and Noreen had a really long week. They're all back home, but let's just continue to lift up little Alyssa in our prayers. Uh, we, we try to always remember our present ministries. It's an ongoing project of this church. And then finally, last Saturday night, there were two young men from the Gentry area uh, the, who lost their lives in an accident on Old Springtown Road or East Main Street in Gentry. And the, we just want to continue to hold up the Long family and the Hurt family as they're going to need lots of healing and lots of prayers and lots of support as they continue to deal with this loss of those of those two young men. So I would invite you, to the extent you're able, to join me as we kneel for prayer and ask the Lord to be with us this day. Dear Lord God in heaven, we pause before you this morning. We thank you for the blessings you have given to us we thank you for this opportunity we have to worship you. We especially want to remember the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. We thank you for his redemption. We thank you for his resurrection. We thank you that he has died for our sins. We praise your name, dear Lord. We pray you will, you will be raised up in this service today. We pray that your spirit will be here among us, that you will touch the hearts of all those who are here, that our hearts might be enlightened, that our hearts might be ready for your return. Thank you, dear Lord, for the blessings you give, for the blessings you bestow, and we pray now that you will be with these, all of these young people and all the participants in the program this morning that we might receive a blessing. In your name we pray. Amen. young people are just about ready to come out and share with you the story of Jesus I want you to know just before we start how much how grateful I am of all the work that has happened be behind the scenes and uh, we're going to share with you just a, a little story it, you can read along in the different Gospels but you'll have to flip back and forth because we've put it kind of chronologically in order so Matthew Mark Luke and John has these stories in it but you'll be flipping back and forth but I just invite you to join in and to observe the story and to think about what Christ has done for us and uh, and watch your young people minister to you today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus had now given three years of public labor to the world. His example of self-denial was before them. His life of purity, of suffering and devotion, was known to all. Yet this short period of three years was as long as the world could endure the presence of its Redeemer. As Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, he sent two of them and said, Go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it. So they did, as Jesus said, and brought the colt to him, and threw their clothes on it, and sat on it. Many spread their clothes on the road, and others waved leafy branches and laid them on the road. Then those who followed out cried, saying, And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Then Jesus went into the temple of God. He drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of money and the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to him, them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Then he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, and he lodged there. The next morning, Jesus returned to the city, and he came into the temple. The chief priests and elders confronted him as he was teaching. They said, by what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority? But Jesus answered them and said to them, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, where was it from? From heaven or from men? And they reasoned among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe in him? But if we say from men, we fear the multitude, for all count John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus and said, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. <laughs> yes. 
Then the chief priests, scribes, and elders assembled at the palace of Caiaphas, the high priest. They said, what shall we do? For this man works many signs. If we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. So they plotted to take Jesus by trickery and kill him. <coughs> then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was. There they made him a supper and Martha served. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, said, Why wasn't the fragrant oil sold for money? and given to the poor. He said this, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not always have. Then Judas went to the chief priest to betray Jesus to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. So Judas sought how he might betray Jesus. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare that you may eat the Passover? And he sent out two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him wherever he goes, in, saying to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is the guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. There, make ready for us. So his disciples went into the city, and found it just as Jesus had said to them. And they prepared the Passover. In the evening he came with the twelve. Now as they sat and ate, Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you who eats with me will, be, will betray me. And they begin to be sorrowful and say to him, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? He answered them, It is one of the twelve who dips with me in the dish. Then dipping the piece of, oh. then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas. So Jesus told him, What you are about to do, do quickly. Jesus got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, 
not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who would betray him. So when he had washed their feet and taken his garments and sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I have done for you, done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for I am so. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke, and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Assuredly, I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even if all are made to stumble, I will not. But Jesus said to him, Assuredly I say to you that day, that today, even this night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he spoke even more vehemently, If I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said likewise. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. He went a little further and fell on the ground. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Then he came and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away and prayed, and spoke the same words. When he 
returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. Then he came a third time, and he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. My betrayer is at hand. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas led a crowd armed with swords and clubs up to Jesus. Then Judas approached Jesus and kissed him. Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Then the men seized Jesus and arrested him. When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And Simon Peter struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. Jesus commanded Peter, Put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priest, the officers, and the elders who had come for him, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour when darkness reigns. Then the disciples deserted him and ran away. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes gathered together. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he sat down with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. Now the chief priest and council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Many bore false witness against him, but their testimonies did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he kept silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest questioned him, saying, are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, What further need do we have of witness? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be deserving of death. Then some began to spit on him, and to blindfold him, and to beat him with their fists, saying to him, Prophesy! And the officers slapped him with the palms of their hands. Now as Peter was in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came up to him, saying, I neither know or understand what you are saying. He went out on the porch, and a rooster crowed. <coughs> and the servant girl saw him again, and began to say to those who stood by, You're one of Jesus' followers. But he denied it again. 
And a little later, those who stood by said to Peter again, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean, and your speech shows it. Then he began to curse and swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. A second time the rooster crowed. <laughs> then Peter called to mind the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And when he thought about it, he wept. Then Judas, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, he felt remorse, and he returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they say, said, what is that to us? See to that yourself. And he threw the pieces of silver into the temple sanctuary, and he departed, and he went and hanged himself. In the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. As Jesus stood before the governor Pilate, Pilate asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said to him, It is as you say. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he answered him not one word, and the governor marveled greatly. And when Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked if the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Now when Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had desired for a long time to see him, because he had heard many things about him, and he hoped to see some miracle performed by him. Herod questioned Jesus with many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and accused him, and then Herod and his soldiers treated him with contempt. They mocked him, they arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him back to Pilate. Thank you. 
Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing to the multitude one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you? B Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? But while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife came to him. She said to him, Have nothing to do with this just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered them, Which of the two should I release to you, Jesus, King of the Jews, or Barabbas? The Barabbas! 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 Pilate said to them, what then shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? Let him be crucified! Crucify him! Then the governor said, Why, what evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, Crucify him! Crucify him! When Pilate saw that he could not prevail, but rather that an uproar was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and our children. Then he released Barabbas to them and had Jesus flogged. So the soldiers took Jesus and stripped him of his clothes and put a scarlet robe on him. They twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. They bowed their knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had scourged him, Pilate presented Jesus to the crowd, saying, Behold your king. The crowd again cried, Away with him. Away with him, crucify him. So Pilate replied, Take him and crucify him, for I have no fault in this man. And he delivered Jesus to the crowd to be crucified. The soldiers took the robe off Jesus, put on his own clothes, Then they gave him a cross to bear and led him away to Calvary. a certain man, Simon, a Cyrenian, 
to bear his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha. And they crucified him with two others, one on his right and one on his left. Pilate had written a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And those who passed by blasphemed him and said, You who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests and scribes also said, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. Then one of the criminals said, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Then the soldiers took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. So the soldiers said among themselves, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it. There stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, Mary Magdalene, and John. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and John, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, John took care of her. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, oh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood by when they heard that said, Look, he is calling for Elijah. As Jesus hung on the cross, he said, I thirst. Someone ran and filled a sponge full of wine vinegar, put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. But others said, Let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to take him down. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And bowing his head, he breathed his last.
Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And when the Roman centurion saw these things, and the way Jesus breathed his last, he feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. Therefore, because it was the preparation day, and the bodies should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of two criminals. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. Now when evening had come, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus but secretly for the fear of the Jews, went and asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. Pilate marveled that he was already dead and he summoned the centurion and asked him if he had been dead for some time. So when he found out, he granted the body to Joseph. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, hewn out of rock, in which no one had been laid. So Joseph came and took the body of Jesus, and Nicodemus also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen with the spices and laid him in the tomb. They rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James observed where he was laid, and they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. Wow. Wow. On the next day, the chief priests and Pharisees gathered together to Pilate. They came to Pilate saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive how that deceiver said, After three days I will rise. Therefore command that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people he has risen from the dead. So the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard. Go your way. Make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guards.
and the life.
Our young people did a great job, didn't they? You know, you might have noticed that there were some really tall young people involved too, and these have been all behind the scenes. A lot of parents, a lot of uh, church family that's been a part of this. They've put tons of work behind this. But there's one person who really hatched the idea, who uh, came and said, you know, a couple months ago, Pastor, I wonder, can we do something with the kids to, to do an Easter program here this weekend? And I said, why not? If you've got the energy, go for it. And uh, Andrea, I want to invite you to come forward. She's been our... She, she's our, our, our director, our script writer, our prop uh, developer, and, and coordinator of this chaos and everything else. And, and so we just uh, are so grateful for all that she did. And, and uh, so we picked up a little something here you can put in your garden uh, every year at Easter time and remember this one. And uh, we just want to say thank you so much, Andrea, for all you did. I know you had a team, but you really brought us together. I'd like to invite you to bow your heads while we have our benediction. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, today we have listened to the story again of your love for us. It was shared through the young people and the, through their eyes, and, and yet, Lord, how, how true it must have been. It, at times it might have been a little chaotic, and at other times it was just so exciting to see your love shown in this way. Lord, we thank you for what you did that you died on the cross for us. And Lord, we're excited to know that we are serving a risen Savior, that you are alive today. You are the resurrection and the life, and we can accept that in our lives. So Lord, may we leave here filled with your spirit. Thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen.